to do. Um, firstly, as far as today is concerned, I wear quite a number of hats. Um, you probably don't see it in my head. Um, you know, it's actually bigger than it seems. Um, but for today, I'm the chair of uh, SEAS, and uh, that's the hat that I'll be wearing. And also, I run a renewable energy company, more, more so a waste to energy company that is the first um, company of its kind in Asia. We actually uh, produce energy from food waste. I think perhaps most of you have uh, read about IUT Global. I wear quite a number of other hats. I sit on the uh, National um, Climate Change Committee and also sit on um, the <clears throat> well, Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore that has been structured, I think, about a couple of months ago. So um, I'm just going to state basic facts that are currently uh, what's happening. Um, I'll leave the rest to the question and answer period because I think I can elaborate a lot more there and pro probably a lot more efficiently. So I do encourage you to ask questions um, at, the, at the end of this session. And perhaps if I... Um, covering the opportunities, challenges and strategies I think uh, Singapore is facing right now. Um, looking at the opportunities, um, Benjamin mentioned a figure of 71 billion in terms of um, investments in clean energy. These are figures that I've got. I think whether they are 148 billion or 71 billion, these are big figures. Okay, and it shows that um, as compared to 2006, actually this figure has doubled. Okay, so there's a lot of interest globally on renewable energy technologies and adoption of renewable energy technologies. Um, the clean energy part of it, you know, account for 19% of the global energy uh, infrastructure investments. We're talking about projects as such. Uh, taking into the fact that, you know, this also includes energy efficiency. Um, I think the good news is 80% of the CERs, or, you know, uh, carbon emission reduction certificates, derive out of Asia. Now, a lot of these projects to do with renewables or clean energy depends on investment, depends on money. And a lot of investors basically look at what they get out of the project with respect to CERs. Okay, I think because 80% of these projects come out of Asia, we can see a lot of these um, uh, technologies being applied here because investors obviously get a much better return out of the CERs. Um, Annualized growth rate in the wind sector alone over the last four years was 73%. So you see, just on wind alone, uh, you know, there's a huge interest. In, you know, right now, there are huge uh, wind farms coming up in both China and Australia and New Zealand. So you can see there's a lot of interest in renewables. Um, for the solar, you're looking at 254%. Um, and it's, it's growing at even greater rates. And right now, with the, the way the technology is going, um, I think um, previously we are looking at possibility of grid parity 2014 or 2010. I think it's somewhere in between. It's going to be a lot earlier than later. REC's uh, CEO feels that it will be there, I think, by 2010 or 2011. Um, <clears throat> now, all the figures that I've given you above comes from the new energy finance um, figures that uh, we've taken. I've taken these figures from. Okay, I think challenges as far as we are concerned, not only in Singapore but also in Asia, is the high cost of RE and the application of uh, these technologies right now. Relevant and inconsistent, I think, public policies. Each country seems to have policies that are different. Uh, China uh, basically has uh, legislated by that by 2015, 10% uh, of the power supply through the grid should be renewables. India has done the same thing, and I think um, they uh, mentioned that 
by 2010, this should happen. Um, we don't have such a policy in Singapore. Okay. Now, obviously, most of these projects that we look at, whether in Singapore or within the region, they're all greenfield type projects. Um, and, and I think that's the challenge because there are no basic references on similar type projects that were done before, or particularly the same size or bigger. And I, this is one of the uh, uh, challenges. And I think all of you read, as far as the newspaper is concerned, um, there's a big hue and cry all around the region. Um, our neighbors find that they, they, um, by subsidizing fuel or oil, it's not sustainable. So they increase it by big chunks. So it shows that in all these countries, the cost of fuel and the cost of electricity is not really real. Okay? And these are the challenges that I think applying renewable energy or clean energy technologies have to face. Now, as far as um, I think Singapore is concerned, um, some of these have already been mentioned by the panel up here. Um, we are hoping to develop Singapore into a clean energy center or clean energy hub for this whole region. Starting with the, the uh, launching of the SIPO uh, in April 2007, the focus is very much on solar Although we are saying that uh, you know, we'll also uh, basically look at uh, wind and hydrogen cells and the other uh, forms of renewable energy technology. Um, and the two other areas of carbon services and energy efficiency. Now carbon, as you all know, I mentioned before about CERs. Now you have to basically be able to sell your carbon uh, for your projects to be uh, uh, viable. So trying to develop Singapore into a, a, a carbon trading center, I think for the whole of this, this region, would make a lot of sense because we're already the third largest oil trader in the world. And using the same platform, we, we can obviously trade carbon. Now, um, we're targeting uh, um, you know, 1.7 billion in terms of value add and employment of 7,000. Um, you've heard about the investments we put in uh, as far as R&D is concerned. And there are already several large players. Uh, we've mentioned them. Conergy is one of them, Vestas, Rolls-Royce, etc. Now, I'm just going to slip through these other slides uh, very quickly. Um, you know, this is on Singapore's nas national uh, climate change strategy. Um, you've probably read about it. Um, this is actually the structure of the climate change uh, committee. I chair the Committee on Household, so all the energy efficiency labeling actually comes under this. But you see there are a number of other uh, subcommittees as well. That's about C's. We were launched on the 12th of July in 2006 when Singapore acceded to Kyoto. Um, objective of the association basically is to promote energy efficiency and awareness of um, energy efficiency, promote renewable energy technology services, um, project development, both here and regionally, facilitate carbon asset management projects and carbon emission trading, and provide a platform actually for investors to engage with developers of RE and EE projects. Um, there I end my, my talk and uh, I welcome questions later on.